I met the most stubborn guy in court this morning. You know, when you blame your bad behavior on someone else, it doesn't excuse what you've done. Accidental events drove today's couple into divorce court. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Stephen Daquan Wells and Nikea Williams. The two of you have been together for 11 and a half years. Uh, you do not want to be together anymore. Uh, Mr. Mr. Wells, you say that Ms. Williams has thought tendencies. Yes. Why don't you explain <laughs> to me why you believe she has thought tendencies? What I mean by that, uh, that she acts like She's a single woman. Like, I she... I do. Yes. Stop. Uh, I would give, for instance, like, she would go out with her friends. All her friends are not in her age bracket. They're mm -hmm. all in their 20s. Mm-hmm. Um, which I don't have a problem with that. And you guys are in your 40s? I'm 40, and she's 36. Okay. So, um, she would go out and do, like, all kinds of, like, unnecessary things. Like, we had a, an agreement where we... Say, if if it's three o'clock in the morning, that's our curfew. If it's three o one, it's gonna be a problem. Mm -hmm. So she would, she we had a bad argument because she came back at four thirty in the morning and thought it was okay because she was with our upstairs neighbor. Then it wasn't okay because you said that at three o'clock we come in. So she lifted that so she could stay out late so she wouldn't have to hear my mom. Now, Ms. Williams, are you out running around with a bunch of 20-year-olds and staying no, out to all true. hours of the morning? No. What's that going on? What happened was I went out one night with one of the one of my friends. They're not in their early 20s. They're either in their late 20s or 30s, and his friends also are younger. So it's not like I'm the one with the younger friends also. We do tend to hang out with a younger group of people. Mm -hmm. Now, what happened was that night I was with her and I was with her in her car. So I was not in control of what time. I explained to her that I had to be home, you know, because that we did, we are, we're in agreement of being three o'clock. Three o'clock, you know. Is... Right. So in agreement with that, she smokes and she guy and she ended up falling asleep and I got home late. Mm -hmm. And that it was no excuse for it. That's what it was. I don't understand how he can sit there and even say anything about the rules where he's never followed any of them not coming home, staying out all times of the night, being gone for two to three days, not knowing where he's at, being concerned. And as far as thought tendencies, I don't have any thought tendencies. You... Well, he says... Well, you say, Mr. Wells, she's cheated on you at least four times. No. No, she's cheated on me once. Once. But she's had conversations over social media with four different people. But you four slept different with three people. people. Okay. And well, had well, a baby well, on Ms. me. Well, Ms. Williams, let me ask you this. Do you admit to the one cheat? Yes, I do. Yeah. And I got After explain... her back was against the wall, uh, yes, No, no, no explain it. it to me, Ms. Williams. What, 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 how do you justify that one? After years of wanting attention, begging for emotion, like, you know, like, to be there for me, support me, show me comfort, show me attention, I told them, eventually, I will change. And that's what happened. After years of wanting that and wanting that, wanting to be held, wanting to be, you know, uplifted and, and feel like a woman, he wasn't doing that. And I told him eventually I would change. And that is what happened. I eventually started to change. And then now, years later, you want to give me the attention and you expect me to turn around and do a 360 for you and give you the attention that you want now from me. It doesn't work like that. I, I, I got what you're saying. Now, Ms. Wells, nothing justifies the cheat, Mr. Wells. I'm going to put that out there right there. But is there any truth to, to, to her contention that you were not a caring, uh, supportive mate to her in the past? Okay, we have history together. Mm -hmm. 11 and a half years, that's, that's a decade and some change. Right. What she's referring to is... I was not, I would say, caught up into the lifestyle that I wasn't going for. And what I mean by that, I was doing photography. So I was, it's a grind. You got to be mm -hmm. out in all kinds right. of weather, be around all different types of social people. Right. So um, it caused me to be home late. It causes me to be out or leaving when I really don't feel like I'm trying to get ahead. You understand what I'm saying? You're working so, hard. Yeah, basically. Hmm. And, Sleeping and, with them? He's saying he was working hard. He was out working. He was trying to do his thing. He was trying to make money, which which is a grind. It takes a long time. Do you disagree that he 
with no, that. I don't agree, disagree with the whole industry part of it, the, the higher part of the industry. What I had the problem was with the, the females in general that he dealt with, just like random off the street females or, you know, that one. Well, what to, was he doing with the random females? Taking, supposedly taking photos of them. But my thing is, if I'm at work and I'm coming home at 11 o'clock at night and you're on the phone in the bed in the dark talking to a female, that's not professional to me. That's personal. That we, or if we Were I, you on the phone in the bed in the dark at 11 yeah. o'clock talking to some at woman? At that time, yeah, I did because I was suffering from headaches and the lights, like, really hurt my eyes. <laughs> and it's the truth. It, it sounds lame. It sounds lame, but I have no reason to lie to her. I'm not... But why 11 but, o'clock at night? I mean, I've hired photographers for this, that, and the other thing, but never at 11 o'clock at night. Because the only time I could catch them is because they have different... They, we all come from different walks of life. Or the text messages that you were receiving saying, oh, I just got out the shower or I'm taking out the garbage. That's not professional. That's personal. Mean, mean it, yo, I'm t I, I took a shower, I'm taking out the garbage, no, I'm hitting you No, they're texting you that. Again. Why? I'm, That's not they're professional. They're telling me what they're doing, uh -huh. and they're letting me know when I'm done what I'm doing, I'm going to call you. Call you. Basically. But, for what, though? You already did. You, my wait, thing wait, 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 hang on, hang on. My thing was this. Hey, sorry. Nobody cross-examines in here except me. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to... My understanding is that he cheated like eight years ago, and you Four say seven. she can't get over it. Is that true? I can tell you about that night. And what what happened? A friend of mine was having a, bar, a bachelor party. His best man was throwing <laughs> the bachelor party. It was kind of lame. I'm like, yo, we should go out. So we went out, went to one of my favorite strip clubs, talked to some of the females. If they wanted to make some extra money, come back to the spot, give us a private dance. They said, fine. They came back. Everything was fine and dandy. Again, at that time, I was suffering from headaches. I didn't know why. At that time, I didn't have any better medical benefits, so I couldn't go to the hospital. So I would try to treat it as best I could. So I made an irrational decision to ask a stripper yes. for some Tylenol. Yes, a and stripper. And she gave me some What ecstasy. stripper do you know has Tylenol in their G-string? <laughs> What stripper do you know has Tylenol Again, in their phone? she's talking because she was not there. I'm telling her that. So you asked the stripper for Tylenol? Yes. It's and, he, and, and, and she <laughs> gave you ecstasy yes. and said, then what happened? 30 minutes later, she had me in the back. No, it wasn't in the back. It was in my car. In the back my of brand the new house. car. In the back of the house where the car was parked. She, it she was... took advantage of me. No. She took advantage? She took advantage of me. <laughs> no, I, she, say that, I say that because see, about... Let me ask you, let, let, let me ask you this. Hang, hang, hang on, hang on. Were her services free or did she charge you? <laughs> Not you in mean? my brand new car. <laughs> were, were the stripper's services free or did she charge you? I ain't give her no money, so obviously it was free. In my brand new car. And not to mention the pictures that were taken of her in my brand new car. Which Next. I did not take those photos. Who took One them the in? It's the... a hard thing. I and can then... I, no, hang, hang, hang on. I can see a stripper service in you, but I can't see it for free. There's why? why oh wow! I'm gonna go. We already paid them to be there. If you get any money, oh, so afterwards. you did. So, so the services were paid for. The dancing, yeah, not the other activity. <laughs> So that's the only time you ever cheated on her? I cheated on her. Three. Twice. As I know. Twice. That day. That day. But that, that was that the day. only day. That day. That, that day. was the only time. That was yeah. just a yes. sex-filled, yeah. happy Ecstasy day. Ecstasy is a hell of a drug. Ms. Williams, you say that uh, Mr. Wells had a child with an ex-girlfriend during the course of your relationship. Tell yes, me about when that. when I met him, he was dating a female um, that I wasn't aware of. I found out about her um, years later. And to my extent, I was one night, he was asleep, and his Yahoo was open. And I went to close this. I can go into my own Yahoo, and I, it something caught my attention on one of his pages 
and it <laughs> said re, I said reply, and it said our daughter. So I clicked on it and I opened it and found out he had a baby. And I was hurt because it was by the same person mm -hmm. that he was with from the beginning. So it was like a big slap in the face. So mm -hmm. did you have a child with an ex and you didn't inform the woman that you had been with for years? That's another funny story. It well, happened, uh, please it tell me. That, it happened the same night. The same night. As the same the night that the, the, the stripper gave you yes, ecstasy? it happened the same night. So the stripper gives you ecstasy, mm -hmm. then she gives you some services, mm -hmm. and then you, what, go to another house and get serviced again by somebody no, else? No, I went to get me something to eat. I was on my way home. I ran to my ex-girlfriend's family member, uh -huh. and we chopped it up for a little bit. And before I was about to leave, because my food was ready, he was like, yo, you should say hi to my sister. She'd be happy to see you. I said, all right, where y'all live at? They live right across the street. And I, ju and I just recently showed her, you know, try to walk her through it, like what happened that night. And I went up there, I said, what's up? And then so on and so forth happened. And then, and then after that happened... Just, just random women just come up to you random. and give you sex. No, not random. <laughs> no, 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 not random. But my thing is, why would you even go up there knowing that I don't... that you was cheating with her? Again, I was not thinking that straightly that night. So that's the only time you ever cheated on her? Yes. No. I cheated, on, I cheated no. on her. I cheated on her. Three. Twice. As I know. Twice. That day. That day. But that, that was that the day. only day. That day. That, that day. was the only time. That was yeah. just a yes. sex-filled, yeah. happy Actually, day. Actually, she is a hell of a drug. Or the time he... So there was a time when he was working, and he had left. He never came home. He was gone for three days. Didn't know where he was. No phone call, no nothing, no idea where he is, none. And he comes home. Where were you? I was in New York sleeping on park benches. Comes to find out, he wasn't. He was at a female's house for three days. Did you just walk away for three days and go stay with some I other woman? I just recently lost my job, and I was feeling down about myself, and I felt worthless. So I went to New York, and I slept on the bench for the first night, but then the next day, I contacted somebody that I knew out there, and then I stayed at their house for the last two days. You went to New York to sleep on a park bench so you could feel better? I was feeling really... Because I lost a really important job, and I felt worthless. What so. an odd response. But it's the truth. His favorite line is, it's your best interest to keep me happy. If you don't cook and clean, what do I need you for? Do you say stuff like that to her? Yes. Have you been living together for years but find that splitting up is as complicated as getting a divorce? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Don't forget to join the conversation on social media. Go to facebook.com slash divorcecourt and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at divorcecourt. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. Mr. Wells, you live, you live a very intriguing life. Uh, intriguing things happen to you. But I want to know a little bit more about Ms. Williams. You say that she needs to grow up. Why do you say she needs to grow up? Because in the first three years of our relationship, yeah, I was immature. I was doing a lot of dumb things. Right. We, recent, we had gotten to a situation where we both got incarcerated for something that we had no potential of doing. She went to jail. Me and, her, her, and a couple of family members bailed her out. I had to stay in jail for 132 days because I had a bunch of old tickets from, like, 12 years ago that I never took care of. So, after getting out in February of 08, my whole mindset changed. I'm not doing this. I lost my passion for photography. I still love art. I just wanted to be home with her and our child and work and just be productive. Mm -hmm. So, when I say she needs to grow up, I did it. It took me going to jail to do it, but I still did it. Why, why do you say she's not grown up? Because she start things and don't finish them. And that's really annoying. Give me an example. Prime example. In the middle of our relationship, she wanted to go to school. 
Fine, mm -hmm. go to school. But then at that time, I was being immature. I was using the car, wasn't picking her up on time, so she quit. So moving forward, um, my job had laid me off in May of this year, and she said, hey, I want to go to school again. I said, you know what? I'm going to stay home with the kids. I'm going to take the back seat. You go do what you do. Then when I recently found out she cheated on me, eight years after the fact that I, you know, she quit. She didn't quit school, but she took a month off and blamed it on me, saying, well, you had me in a certain place. Like, stop blaming me for your shortcomings. Okay. Like, I, I, I don't blame you for not having this and that. I blame myself. Mm -hmm. I used to blame you because it's easy to blame be, somebody else. No, it's easy to be in denial than mm -hmm. see denial. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I was in denial for a while. Right. But when I, when I turned to a certain age and when I got out of jail, I, don't, I have no desire. In order to cheat on somebody, you got to have the wants and you got to have the desire to do it. Right. Ms. Williams, tell me about the school thing. What, what is he talking about? The school thing, I did take a break from school, but he, what he fails to realize is the reason why I am not in school is because of the things, it's the way I'm treated, the way I'm talked to. Um, I always have to reschedule something. Like, if he has something that needs to be done, then I have to change my schedule for him. When I'm out running errands or if I'm out doing something, he thinks, like, there's some disco light that comes on and I'm out partying. No, it doesn't work like that. I'm out taking care of business. And as far as the school, he's, if you're tearing me down, like his favorite line is, it's your best interest to keep me happy. If you don't cook and clean, what do I need you for? She's taking two different subjects that, and making it into one but the, sentence. No, I'm not. Well, I, I, I it's think, just I think, a, it's I think, verbal well, I, abuse and it, it mentally messes with me. Let, let me ask you this. Do you say stuff like that to her? Yes. And let me explain to you what it did to her and why it ends up in the school thing. On divorce court, what are you gonna do? I ask the tough questions. It wasn't me, it wasn't right? me. I didn't do it. Did you ever catch him? No, <laughs> but you tried. And I give you the answers. Men and women must explain themselves to one another. Because I pay his phone bill, Your Honor. Quit paying a man's phone bill, honey. Visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. Let me explain to you, if, if, if you are in a relationship with someone who picks at you like that and says things to you like that, mm -hmm. it destabilizes you. It makes you frightened, it makes you afraid, and it makes you question your very worth. It doesn't seem like it would do that, but it does, especially if it's over time and it's from the person who's supposed to love you, understand you, and know you the best, is telling you you aren't anything. And when you continue to get that message, over a long period of time and said, you best keep me happy because I'm the best thing that you have, you're diminishing her. And it changes who she is and how she feels. Having said that, I'm going to say this. Shouldn't nothing stand between you and the doors of a school, especially if you're with a guy... <laughs> ..with a guy who talks that kind of stuff to you. You, are, you know, your response is, I am better than, and I can move on, and I can have more, and my life is much bigger than you are. And if you want to go, step. Always be in a position to tell a dude he can step. Because, and if you, the more education you have, the easier it is for you to tell him to step. And once he knows you can tell him to step, he stops that nonsense. Because he knows he is disposable. Never disposable, dear. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can dispose. You see what I'm saying? Got a dude don't like him, he's not right. I can dispose. Don't need him for nothing. I got all my stuff. I'm mm -hmm. together. I'm educated. Mm -hmm. It's powerful. It's like, you don't define me. All the degrees on my wall and the money in my bank, all of that speaks to who I am, not what brother I happen to be with that day. And I totally agree with you. I totally agree with Feel you. Feel it. Believe it. Live it. This matter is adjourned. When you make a habit of telling your spouse negative things and being critical all the time, you diminish them. 
and you simply don't have that right. Call us at 877-311-2222.